So my presentation here is uh, dealing with blackberry crop price historical data. So most of this data comes from the USDA, uh, and I've kind of been compiling it here, see if we can find some trends and uh, interesting things for our industry to be looking at and as growers, maybe help you guys understand a little bit uh, what's going on in our market and uh, maybe uh, we can learn from the past and, and get some ideas of what's probably going to be coming for us in the future. So, start here. Um, just to understand the lay of our industry, uh, there's four main growing regions uh, that produce blackberries for the U.S. market. We have the USA, which is predominantly Oregon, Washington, uh, Southwest Washington, um, Chile, Mexico, and Serbia. Uh, so I'm going to kind of walk through the, the regions and kind of give the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, here's a, just a map I, I made quick here just to give some uh, reference. So the Chileans here, they're shipping. They, and it's an interesting thing to note for the Chileans is that it's actually closer for them to ship to the East Coast than it is for them to hit the West Coast. Um, and the Serbians over here, they got a long haul, uh, mainly East Coast. So for strengths, we're going to start with, with the U.S. or Oregon. Obviously, proximity to market, location, location, location is key here. Uh, we're in uh, one of the bigger... Uh, nations of consumption of, of blackberries here and, and we have great varieties in our infrastructure. Uh, as, as growers we really got a, uh, a big benefit by having a lot of uh, baggers and packers right in our local area. Uh, weakness, I would say our relatively high cost of production compared to these other growing regions. Um, somewhat inconsistent supply and a lack of fresh market. So. Uh, Mexico uh, is really benefiting from moving most of their blackberries fresh and then the processed fruit that comes out of Mexico is normally uh, either uh, you know excess fruit uh, and so anything they can get for that fruit is better than throwing it away which makes their cost pretty low. The Chileans, uh, they got good infrastructure, in infrastructure. Uh, they are really good at, at direct to retail business so they they know how to go and contact the retailers directly and they'll ship in product already polybagged. Uh, and they, they, sh they can ship directly to the East Coast and they might even be able to beat us on freight differential between going from the Pacific Northwest to the East Coast. Uh, their weakness is proximity to market, they're pretty far down there and, and they don't have a fresh market. Uh, and their cost of production, I would say, is probably similar to ours, if not uh, uh, maybe a little bit lower. Uh, Mexico, fresh market, low cost of production. Uh, they're, they're close to the USA. And uh, weakness would be varieties, two peas. I don't know if you guys have had two pea, not the greatest. Yeah. Uh, and they don't have great infrastructure. Serbia, they're shipping mainly East Coast. They're fairly low cost production, and uh, weakness would be infrastructure. There should be mainly bulk product, so 30 pound cases that would be repacked on the East Coast with the baggers there. Uh, and quality can be sometimes an issue. So just some historical data. I created this chart here. I wanted to see, so supply versus demand in Oregon uh, frozen blackberry, the frozen blackberry market. And the good thing about this graph is that it shows a really consistent uh, correlation between supply and grower price, which the grower price would be the gray there, and <coughs> volume would be the purple here. So when we have a down crop like 91, you see a huge spike in price. Uh, next year we came back pretty, pretty heavy volume and we, the market dropped. So you wouldn't necessarily, if you graphed uh, like blueberries for the last 10 years, you wouldn't see a correlation like that. Uh, so, to me, that, that means, you know, our market, there, you, you could probably uh, get some sort of equilibrium volume that your market is, is fluctuating around. So, you, you can see pretty good growth right here in volumes, 
uh, that Mark was handling more volume out of Oregon, but then the last five, ten years, it kind of been a little bit stagnant. And so to me, that begged the question, is consumption stagnant? I mean, are, are we just capped out? Ameri you know, US people are not eating any more blackberries. Which, on the next slide, uh, so when I put in the imports and Oregon, it's not, it shows that we're clearly growing. Consumption's growing. Unfortunately, it's just not growing with us. So uh, down here, you can see the import volumes. And uh, we'll talk more about uh, what that all looks like and, and who the players there. So uh, I wanted to touch on here the 2014 market spike and what it's done to our market. So if you look at uh, 2011 to 2013, we really had some pretty stable volumes and stable pricing. And I think it was a pretty good win-win for, for everyone, uh, growers and packers. Uh, grower price between 75 and 85 cents on IQF. Uh, and volumes consistent. We hit 2014 though, and we thought there was a lot of damage. And I think as an industry, we may, may have overreacted a little bit. So a 10% decrease in production led to a 30% increase in our grower price, which kind of reflects the market. Uh, so we went to our customers and we asked for a 30% increase in price when uh, really volume-wise, we didn't we work too far off of what we, we had been doing. Uh, but when you look at this next graph here, you can see that to the market in 2013, we actually had more volume available to the market because of the import of fruits uh, than we did in 2013. So to, to our customer base, it <coughs> kind of looked like maybe we were bluffing a little bit. So uh, you <laughs> we're asking for a big increase in price, but what they, what they found was that there was a lot of other growing regions that if we were at $1.25, said, hey, we'll do it for a dollar. We'll supply and, and they were able to perform. So uh, that's had impacts on our markets going forward here in the last two years. So that led to an erosion of market share. So in 2013, we had kind of been punching down a little bit. We had gained market share. This is based off of volume. Uh, and, but the 2014 spike in our price and our lack of supply led us to lose about 11% of the market. So how did that, how did 2014 affect 2016? Well, the stable price seen from 2011 to 2013, plus a really high 2014 uh, grower price, I think led to an increase in Oregon plantings of blackberries. Uh, and then the, the 2014 overcorrection led the buyers to look for alternatives to Oregon. Uh, our competitors in, in Chile, Mexico, and Serbia, they stepped up and they said, we can, we can help you with, with uh, lack of supply, and they were able to take market share from us. The market could have crashed in 2015, but we had that heat during harvest, and I think it limited uh, supply. Uh, and so we kind of hit, I think, like a 65 cent around their grower price. Uh, and that kind of just perpetuated more planting, though, to happen. So, the recipe for the 2016 low price is increased acreage, excellent yield, plus lower market share. And I think this graphic kind of describes the current price. So just to look at just the, the, the import volumes, I want to note here that in 94, NAFTA was enacted. And then in 2004, we had the, uh, uh, the U.S. We uh, had a free trade agreement with Chile, and you can see in the in 1990 we had the entire market to ourselves pretty much. Uh, but ever since about 2004, imports have been growing. Positive side, uh, I've been watching the the Mexican. Uh, frozen numbers coming into the U.S. and in 2016, 
that they're, they've been falling, and, and so far this year, I think I have it here in the next graph. Uh, right now, for 2017, year to date, there's about, we've only received in 500,000 pounds of Mexican frozen product into the U.S., where same year to date in 2015, they had already shipped to 2.9 million pounds. So there might be a, a variety of reasons why that's happening, but um, maybe our low pricing is, is having an effect on them, and, may, and I would hope that maybe we're gaining back some market share. So in, in this slide, I have just, uh, I get the calculation actually. So just purely based on volume, uh, Oregon has been growing at about 1% yearly, you know, if you average these numbers out, versus the imports have been growing at around 22%. So overall market, so if I went back to that volume slide where you saw the, the market graph that was going like this, um, the market grows at about 35 or 35 or 3.5% yearly. So I just want to recap here. Uh, processed blackberries, uh, we're competing with Chile, Mexico, and Serbia. We're really in a global market. Um, and the overall uh, consumption is growing, which is good. Uh, but unfortunately, the import, imported fruit is taking a lot of the market growth away from our region. I think we're, we're gaining back market share uh, with, with the low pricing, the 2016 low pricing, but how sustainable is our grower price? Uh, I think the, the key takeaway I, I took from the data was that consistency of supply, so Oregon being able to consistently provide uh, our you know, supply to the market and a, and a reasonable price between you know, on that product is key to stabilizing our markets and being able to grow with our customers. And just a, a note, when I look at this, I am less afraid of the Chilean fruit as I am of the Mexican fresh market. Because if you looked at the, I was going to put some of the fresh market data in here, but uh, the fresh market has been really taking off and the volumes out of Mexico are really increasing. They don't have a lot to lose in the frozen, I mean, their, their skin in, in their frozen fruit is limited. It's, 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 a side item. it's better than throwing the fruit on the ground and getting SWD or other issues. And so they're gonna to continue to grow and continue to be a factor that we're gonna to have to deal with in the future. Uh, the Chileans, they got uh, their own issues with, with labor and increased costs <coughs> than the ocean freight coming up here. But that's pretty much all I have. Uh, questions? Yeah. So, are you suggesting that the Mexican fruit that's going into the processed market is going to do something similar to the blackberry industry as the California processed fruit did to the strawberry industry? <laughs> um, I would say. Maybe the data is, is suggesting that. Okay. Yeah, and, and I think the bigger factor is that for the fresh market, uh, when you have this fresh market component, it's it's always this pressure on us as packers that if, or, if we ever try to request a higher, no matter what our crop does, if we start requesting a higher dollar amount from our customers, we, there's always that Mexican fruit that's yeah, sitting right. at the border just right. waiting to come in. So. <laughs>